Good morning. My name is Jim Anderson, and I'll be teaching a class on the theology of rest. My friends call me the rest doctor because I often talk and teach about this subject of rest. Perhaps you are not aware of the fact that the Bible speaks repeatedly about rest. There's actually a theology of rest. My wife is here as well. Her name is Lois. And every once in a while, I'll turn to her and ask her to read something or share a few comments that she has learned or uh, discovered along the way about this topic of rest. For now, I'd like to lead us in prayer. Please join me as we bow before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our mighty God, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we come before you knowing that you do all things well. We thank you for creating this world, this universe. We thank you for the rhythm of work and rest. We thank you as well for being our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and again and again reminding us that there is no true rest apart from you. You have said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I pray this day for all the people, not only those in this classroom, but wherever this video, this recording is viewed and heard, I pray that they would find, first of all, salvation in Jesus Christ and find him to be their rest, rest beyond sleep or leisure. These things I pray this day in Jesus' name. Now, as we begin this topic of rest, it's very important to understand that this is about more than sleep or leisure. And uh, I'll be pointing out some things on the video here, the screen that is. Uh, Sabbath rest. One of the most common verses about Sabbath rest is Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. It's repeated again and again, a Sabbath to the Lord your God. I'll be using the New International Version of the Bible unless otherwise indicated. Sabbath rest, just what is it? Well, it's the rest that you and I need to survive in life, in work, and ministry. Whatever your calling in life may be, you need this kind of deep rest to do well, to survive, to thrive, to be happy in the Lord Jesus, or happy at all. This is about the value of rest. We need to value rest wherever we're from. The world today is restless. It has lost the value of rest. We'll be talking about the value of rest uh, in several nuances found in the Bible. This is about the value of rest. This is about desire for God, intimacy with God, not guilt. I'll speak more about desire that is rekindled, that grows as we meet with God in solitude. Again, it's not to guilt you or to force you into some rigidity, legalistic practice of rest, but rather it is to find love and intimacy in our God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now to begin with, we're going to share several definitions of the word Sabbath. And this is a very good one. This is given to us by F. Lagard Smith in his daily Bible reading in chronological order of the Bible. And I'm going to ask my wife Lois to read this uh, uh, definition provided for us, a summary of the word Sabbath as given in the Bible. First and foremost day of worship. The Sabbath is commanded no less than 12 times throughout the giving of the laws. It is symbolic of the day upon which God rested after creation and a reminder that no day of rest was permitted when the Israelites were in Egyptian bondage. It is the one day each week when all attention can be focused upon God and His blessings. And although the Sabbath falls on the last day of each week, it foreshadows a time when the first day of each week will be observed in memory of the greatest event which will have happened since creation. 
You'll hear me say every once in a while that it's not the day of the week, Saturday versus Sunday or any other day. That's not the important point. It's the concept of rest that we must bring into our lives, into our hearts. And there's a rhythm of one day out of seven. Here's another definition. It comes from Dallas Willard in his book, The Great Omission. Again, Lois will read this portion for us. The Sabbath is a way of life. It sets us free from bondage to our own efforts. Only in this way can we come to the power and joy of a radiant life in ministry and work, a blessing to all we touch. And yet Sabbath is almost totally, totally absent from the existence of contemporary Christians and their ministers. And that is unfortunate that Sabbath or rest is something that's missing from our lives. Now I'm going to read again from Dallas Willard and he uses the word transformation quite often. That has become a common word among Christians and Christian leaders and pastors these days. As we have observed that a lot of Christians are not changing, that is their lifestyle is much like the lifestyle of those of the world. We ask, why aren't they being transformed? The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why aren't Christians more dynamically changed as opposed to the rest of the world? There are definitely indications that are the fruit of the Spirit and so forth, but we ought to see greater dynamic changes in the lives of believers. And Dallas Willard believes that he has a partial solution to this, and I agree with him. Willard says, we strongly need to see the manifest hand of God in what we are and what we do. We need to be sure He is pulling the load, bearing the burden, which we are all too ready to assume is up to us alone. We must understand that He is in charge of the outcome of our efforts, and that the outcome will be good and right. And all this is encompassed in one biblical term, Sabbath. And again he says, Indeed, solitude and silence are powerful means to grace. Bible study and prayer, church attendance among the most commonly prescribed activities in Christian circles generally have little effect for the soul transformation. And there's our word transformation. As is obvious to any observer, if all the people doing them, doing the disciplines of Bible study and prayer and church attendance and so forth, if all the people were doing them were transformed to health and righteousness by them, the world would be vastly changed. Their failure to bring about, that is the disciplines, failure to bring about the change is precisely because the body, the soul, are so exhausted, fragmented, and conflicted that the prescribed activities cannot be appropriately engaged in and by and large degenerate into legalistic and ineffective rituals. Lengthy solitude and silence, including rest, can make them very powerful. Allow me to use an illustration to describe what he's talking about. Uh, I don't cook, I'm not a baker, but I understand that you have to apply many ingredients to a loaf of bread. Not only the salt, the sugar, the flour, and so forth, but there's another element to it all. Time. Time. You can put all the ingredients together, mix them well, and throw it in the oven, and you'll have flat bread. You'll have something very flat. It doesn't rise. It's not the best of bread. It's not fluffy and full. But the baker knows that besides having the ingredients all together and mixed well, that there is a time. Time must be applied to allow the bread to rise, the yeast to work, and so forth. And so it is with us in the Christian life. We can read our Bibles, we can pray, we can fellowship with one another, we can serve, we can witness, we can do all these things. But if we don't pause and stop and rest and let God work these ingredients into our life, we aren't changed. It's the elements of time that are necessary. And that time must be not just running about here and there and serving more often, but it is to be at rest and peace and to contemplate, to meditate upon the kinds of things that God is teaching us. 
That is a, what I believe Dallas Willard is indicating. Transformation needs the element of solitude, the element of Sabbath. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Now it's interesting to note that in these days of restlessness in the world that the secular people that are finding that they can't uh, live 24-7 next to their computers, their work devices, their iPhones, and so forth, that they're finding, apart from the Bible, that it is necessary for them to have what's called a secular Sabbath. And so this person from the New York Times, Mark Bittman, is one of a whole host of people discovering what some are terming uh, a secular Sabbath. Men and women who have not darkened the door of a synagogue or church for years find a need, are finding a need for a real rest. Disconnecting from the almost omnipresent or ever-present technology to technological advances of Blackberry phones and wireless internet and so forth, they're saying we're getting wore out being available for our work and even for our friends to constantly be at the phone, on the phone, at the computer. We need a day of rest from it all, to disconnect, to sit back and just catch our breath. Now the secular people are seeing a need for this, but it isn't it amazing that we, the church people who have the theology of rest in the Bible, tend to work 24-7 or even serve God 24-7 and we have not understood this principle of rest as we have uh, ought to. Uh, 